Hey there, innovators and investors. Today in the Tediverse podcast hosted by NF Ted. We're diving into the digital deep end and digital compass, navigating the transformative world of blockchain and real estate. And our guest today is Jess Kanak. Welcome, and here we go. Welcome, Jesse. Good to see you. What's new? Hey, Ted. Great to be back in the Tediverse. Oh, man, did you hear about the inflation numbers yesterday? Seems like things are working out in the United States, the direction that they should be going. <laughs> Isn't this, they're supposed, aren't, aren't you supposed to end that with a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 that's more relative. Like, everything's questionable these days with the reports on the numbers coming in. Everybody doesn't know, right? Yeah, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be talking about this this uh, on this show about uh, the economic climate uh, that that we all have to look for here, especially in the United States, other parts of the world too. But then again, there are other parts of the world that are uh, doing quite a bit better, um, you know, economically or at least per- perceptually than the United States. So you're in one of them. Mexico is a, a really uh, reasonable haven for a lot of people um you know similar to uh you know what happened uh, during covid and, and people worked remotely and moved down there and and relocated and and did their thing at that point uh and when covid subsided a lot of people left but now um people are finding it challenging to uh live the quality of life on what is uh currently going on here in the united states and so um uh, they're looking in other places like Mexico. Uh, they're also looking in uh, exciting places like Dubai. But uh, you don't know about Dubai, so let's talk about Mexico. Yeah, for sure. I got lots I can talk about Mexico. But what, one thought I wanted to talk to you about, Ted, is, or even just mention, um, in the United States, remember, it was the old American dream where you work hard and good things will happen, right? So I think... Uh, the new generations kind of doubled down on that, and they call it a side hustle these days. So everybody's got a side hustle because they know their bottom line, what they need to do to survive, right? So of course um, that can flip down because people are going to continue spending because they've got to to be able to live, right? So they they keep pulling in extra side hustles or extra jobs just to afford to eat, which is counterproductive. You know what I mean? Or what do you think about that? Well, you know, it's uh, it's basically a sign of the times, and and st- is still part of the the paradigm shift that our society is going through uh, in this technological transition. I mean, uh, that that example that I pointed out a minute ago, or that we've talked about recently, about uh, Zoom being a part of the way we all do business now, but uh, so uh, is some of the mindset about earning a living or having a career has has changed from uh, what it what it was. Now now there is technology. Now there is the ability to live and work remotely. And you know the the younger generations, the the, the biggest population um, in the market to buy a home right now, um, are all tech savvy and uh, and do. Uh, a lot of what we're talking about right now from their mobile phone, you know, not just shopping for a house, but, you know, earn, earning income online. And so um, that's really part of what makes what we're talking about and trying to accomplish here so relevant and important uh, as we all leave these old ways of doing things and perceptions of things behind for where we're all going, uh, which is with with not just mobile apps and, uh, you know, it's more of an instant uh, gratification, but in, in the metaverse and on blockchain. Oh, no doubt. We're all in brand new territory here. And some of us are a little bit more um, experienced because of the generational uh, differences. Some of us grew up learning how to use computers and technology to help us every day. And then there's the generation that is, been adapting to using technology every single day so yeah there's been a huge change in the way that people generate their income especially when it comes to the new generation that uses tiktok a lot like there's there's tiktokers or youtubers that are 
at seven years old clearing 30 grand a month. So here we are in this new day and age where some of the young people don't even know what to do with all of this money or the opportunity that they've got because they've capitalized on it so well. And then there's the other side of the generation that wants to know how to do these things but doesn't know where to start. So they're going to start by doing a computer course, right? Well, ho hopefully some of them uh, join us and, uh, and this is where they start their journey. But, uh, you know, a lot you you brought up a couple of really good points um especially with the the younger generation and um you know a, and the experience part that you and i have when when we were younger in the business um and did things that were effective back then i, I was thinking about this just the other day cold calling for example right you know back before people had mobile phones cold calling was a lot more effective because that was really the only way we could communicate, right? There, there really wasn't uh, email so much at the time and, and nobody had mobile phones. So you, you, you'd have to find a pay phone or, uh, or give somebody uh, be at home on your landline, right? So people are a lot more likely to answer a call if that they get from their home phone, but would today's generation answer a random cold call from a salesperson on their cell phone, not a chance, you know, and, and, and here's another example of how things have changed, you know, back in the day when email was, was becoming popular, you know, it, it wasn't uncommon for you to get an email from your mom or your sister, right? You know, an email. Now, your mom, your sister, even your grandmother, if it, instead of sending you an email, they will all send you a text, right? Or an instant message. And, and so, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the, there, there were reasons for the way we did things in, in present and, and previous times, but the way we're going to be doing things moving forward um, with technology are, are going to render a lot of that stuff obsolete. And I'm, I'm in, you know, part, part of what we're going to be talking about here is the, the real estate industry. And, you know, so what we're going to be talking about here moving forward is really going to expose the you know the the flaws that are inherent uh, or the the ways that things were done in the past that that are being identified as no longer relevant or or sources of some of the bad things that we all have to counter um in, in moving forward into you know the web3 internet um so th this is a really uh, I'm really enjoying where we're going with this show. Um, did I answer oh, no question? Doubt. Yeah, that was a great comment on it. Like, I was just going to say, like, modern conveniencies, like, for example, yeah, cold calling, but let's go a little bit farther than that. Remember, there was door knocking, right? Then came the peephole in the door. Now, the peephole's been replaced with caller ID nowadays, right? So now you got cold calling, but now you got email as well. And I do remember when... Uh, like I said, I'm from the generation as well that kind of grew up with all of this. So I remember when email was not a legal document and could not be used for communicating as something legal. We had to use fax machines, right? So nowadays, um, yeah, email has been accepted as uh, a legal document. And here we are moving into the next phase of obviously protecting the client's privacy doing business in a modern, convenient way that makes things uh, simpler and easier and, of course, less of a headache for the client. I would totally agree with you, know, you said, Ted. Yeah. Well, well I, I, since, since we're going to, you know, point out some of the, the things that we are already, you know, I also want to, uh, and I know I'm going to catch some slack uh, for what I'm about to say about open houses, <clears throat> but, but that, too, is another example of an activity that was, you know, required because that was one of the only activities you could do to market a house um, was to have an open house. But, you know, anymore, we we know based on decades now worth of numbers and statistics, the, the, the likelihood of somebody selling that open house from an open house is 4% or, or a single digit percent somewhere in there. So, you know, when you you look back at the way things were done with with um, 
uh, you know, the not just the open houses, but uh, the 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 old mindset of how we communicated, fax machines, things like that. You know, the 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 standard you know activities, if you will, uh, that people do to market property, for example, right now are not relevant anymore because you know posting a, a an ad on Facebook or doing some something on social media will get you know multiples worth more views and interest than any one of those other activities that I, I just mentioned and have a higher chance of success sadly you know and, and we talked about this on a previous show that there's no data protection law in the United States and these companies are doing their rampant data selling and scraping um, that we've all kind of become accustomed to but uh, that that too is part of why we're here is to, uh, you know expose that stuff and, and enlighten people about what's going on and facilitate this uh, transition into um, as I've also mentioned before you know a, a way for us to communicate without using email without compromising um, the, data from the the transaction or from another uh, client of in th that happens as a result of communicating via email or even text you know th the old ways of doing things they're going to have to change and we will see um, not just a, a lot less communication which is kind of what we all want anyway but better results from the amount of communication effective um, as will be um, you know visible through analytics and and results yeah super super exciting time to be talking about all this stuff oh for sure 100 percent agree like there's still a very valid level of the original dale carnegie uh way that still works however it really depends on the individual how they can modernize that and not only it's it's not always just about views but it's those actual views that turn over into a lead um like for example a lot of clients when uh, when i work with them i always ask them how how did you find me like i'm just curious because i'm responding to a request for information and you know you start by working that way but when i've got the client either on the phone or actually in person when we're when we're here or they're doing a delivery of their unit because sometimes i don't meet them until <laughs> in in like physical person until they've actually completed the process so sometimes I, I like to sit down and just ask them so how did you find me and it's amazing because there's one story that 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 stands out that's the most common between all of these people that are completely different coming from different areas that have told me that what they like about is the videos that they see of me or any of my team because they feel that that's a person that they could trust. Like they somehow see something in the way that we are not just performing, but presenting uh, their opportunity that they feel like that's the kind of person that I could work with and trust. So. If the media is applied properly, um, well, I guess the word would be limitless. There's there's limitless opportunity in this new realm. What do you think, Ted? Well, you know, I, the 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 possibilities are definitely limitless as long as you um, can speak the language and understand uh, enough of how it works to be able to do something. And you know, for though you know, sadly, this is going to be a turning point in. A lot of people's careers because you know we're not just uh, dealing with technology that's changing as everyone is uh, otherwise distracted by all the you know economic and geopolitical things that happen to be going on right now but um, the, the the economic stuff that's also happening at the same time with housing being at least here in the United States the least affordable it's it's been in our entire lifetimes and um that that on top of high prices and and where people's salaries are um are are going to keep these challenging conditions uh, alive for for quite some time to come as a matter of fact i you know and this is not going to be a popular um a, a opinion with some people but i i think they're going to raise interest rate again and uh it, 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 
before the election for sure and and they will go down uh, around election time but um there's going to be a lot of people losing their work to to all of these things um and ai you know uh, th- this is something else that uh, i've been working on some of the technology that that we've got is you know basically an ai real estate agent and uh you know that's going to uh, automate a lot of the things that a buyer's agent will do, for example. And this is all coming as, out as a result of, uh, you know, recent uh, uh, law, uh, lawsuits and and other um, things that are distracting our association from from doing what it's supposed to do. But um, the the fact of the matter is, the business is changing. The role of an agent is changing. The way people who are involved get paid is changing, and it's all going to end up on a smart contract, um, which is going to outline all of this stuff and automate it. And so, there, there. Statistically speaking, everybody, for the most part, wants to be able to speak with a person in a transaction like this. And so, we're going to give them that opportunity as well. You know, people who have bought property, you know, in the past have understand how it all works and are more capable of doing more of the heavy lifting um, than than they were earlier on um, and will likely uh, move towards working with an agent to help them find something that they can't find on their own right now. Um, and a lot of agents will have pocket listings or things like that which are not supposed to be allowed but that that happens too anyway the the point i'm trying to make is that um uh it, the buyer's agent role in our business is about to change and that's just another example of the kind of old mindset way of thinking that i uh, on some of those examples we talked about earlier and and the the real estate business itself um, just like um, when we were talking about cold calling being effective, this this whole business structure was set up at a different time when there was not the technology or information that's widely available, um, and and, and uh, people can't. The consumer is is a lot more able to figure out how to do things, and the real estate agent, unless they can bring something to the table that that the consumer will value that they can't get on their own that could make a difference in a real estate transaction those agents are going to be sought out but the vast majority of the agents that are going to be posting on social media or or using the kind of communications that we've talked about in the past um, are not going to be able to compete with you know when when we start having these conversations with our buyer clients and our seller clients not just about the role of an agent in a tra- transaction. Like you mentioned, uh, speaking about the language. Well, thanks to modern technology, we do have AI that help with dubbing. Like I've even used it a few times and I'm shocked. I'd like, oh, wow, that sounds really good Spanish as well. Um, now, obviously during the distraction of the economics, um, the best agents are going to get creative and they're going to reinvigorate their marketing styles with the use of a new media it's it's um principle right uh stay cre- always be creative abc always be creative because if you're not being creative you're not moving forward people are attracted to a moving object so that's the best thing about being creative and finding these new platforms like ted look at us now here we are in the metaverse we're trying something new it's 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 new it's completely new i i haven't met any other real estate agent that's tried to get me to cooperate or collaborate on something like this so i my hat's off to you ted i'm excited to be here it's always a pleasure to be a guest on the show um with interest rates you know uh it's it's like what they say in stock right you'll eventually be correct uh if you feel that it's going to go up it's possible right um, so it's hard for everyone to kind of have a good idea. All we can look is at the data. They've held it for the last two times. So you you would think they'd be moving from a hawkish stance to more of a dub stance, but that could change. That could change because as they've said, as the data comes in, they have to make their decisions that way. 
And just to comment on our automation, it's great. It's very helpful. <laughs> when it does get frustrating for some leads, um, there needs to be a limit to the automation because people do want to talk to a person. So cold calling has kind of been replaced by email now. And the sooner you get in contact with this lead, the sooner you can get them on a, like a, a video call, FaceTime, face-to-face, um, that's, that's when you start seeing results because you, uh, you earn their trust and they, they realize that this is a real person. And uh, in my case, I can speak about how my personal life experience of moving from Canada down to Mexico what a strange world land, you know, like they don't even speak English here. They do, but, you know, it's mostly Spanish. So, boy, was that a learning curve to change my, my whole mindset of going from English all the time to Spanish most of the time as well. So I would totally agree with you, Ted, and I hope that helps get you back on the train of thought that you were thinking there. See, and um, <laughs> uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it did, and, uh, you know, uh, before I, I lost my train of thought there and talking about the presentations that the buyers agents and, and the, that the agents are going to have to uh, give to their clients, um, I was also going to point out that we are going to start talking about what we do to protect our clients' data before we talk about all the other stuff that everybody else is going to talk about because. You know, uh, there have been a, a, quite a few recent cyber attacks um, here in the United States. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, everybody is, is now aware of, concerned about, and, and keeping an eye out for suspicious emails or suspicious texts, uh, texts that, that will, you know, open up some malware or compromise your personal information in, in some way. And so... This is what we are going to um, mention to our clients up front so that we can establish that, w that safe and secure method of communication, uh, whether it's on a portal or using one of our secure and instant messaging uh, programs that we communicate with, but setting up a protocol uh, whereby there are no sensitive information. Um, it goes through email whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, in, in the example that I gave before, you know, about your your relatives communicating with you in the past, it used to be via email. Well, now we're all plugged into everybody else and we can communicate via text. You know, I don't want to say text, but instant messaging uh, at, at any point in time. So if you want to get somebody and want a response, you know, you'll know if they're online, they'll, they'll respond to you. We, we all do that. And if we're busier, we can't respond or we're asleep, then we just we get to it when we get to it. But the fact of the matter is, email is not a component. And so what, these are the things that we are going to start our presentation out with because we feel like, and the, that's the big reason why we're here is we care about protecting people's data and not putting them in a position where they could be compromised. So that's that's what I wanted to say earlier about um, the mindset, uh, the thought process that is is going to change the way this business is looked at. And and like I said, e even though you mentioned that people do want to talk to somebody, we're plugged in. If if we want to do a call over WhatsApp or a call over Telegram or Signal, we can still do, do that. But um, the, but the fact is, we're not. We're not exposing any of our communication to, uh, to, to anybody that wants to get information out of it. Um, so I just wanted to bring that point up, and, and that's what blockchain and doing business the way we are, including having AI uh, be able to walk somebody through a real estate transaction on the buy side, you know, at, at least here in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my AI bot that I'm, uh, I'm building, my AI real estate agent, is going to have all the forms uploaded. And there's going to be, uh, it's going to be able to explain all the forms to, to our clients. It's going to be able to answer questions about the property, whether from the MLS or information that we've uh, accumulated in a database. Um, and it's going to be able to recommend a suggested uh, price range, what, what it should sell in. It's going to be able to answer questions about what's, you know, 
how much the homeowners association is and what's included uh, and and basically be able to walk somebody all the way through a transaction uh, and like i said if somebody's done it before they can go all the way through and not have to be worried about paying a real estate agent for for the things that they can do themselves uh, and, and at the same time if they want a consultation about negotiation or or to, to be able to get into a unit or uh, to be able to uh, bundle some of those services up and have somebody along with um, uh, along with the uh, to bundle those services uh, in, in a package which will walk somebody all, all the way through the close of escrow so that uh, uh, we're developing a new way of selling real estate to a buyer you know it, especially with some of the rulings that have come down recently uh where a seller a listing agent can advertise a listing in the mls for zero dollars commission and you know where uh, again this is one of those periods of time that we've never really dealt with a situation like this before that we just kind of have to figure it out as we go and, and um and as i've said this before um we're going to come out of this period of time we're in uh, on the other side doing all real estate transactions on blockchain in the same way we now zoom after COVID. it's to me that's exactly the same thing um, and I, I will comment on um, how long i think we're going to be in this situation in just a minute but um, th did, th did that square things up for you as far as um, you know where i think how the real estate transaction is going to be changing moving forward i think that's a great point ted like cyber attacks these days are happening on a regular basis like i don't know if you remember or if you're on yeah you're on facebook i remember but there was a huge drop in a lot of facebook activity when there was a link going around through everybody's inbox where somebody would say hey i'm locked out of my account can you help me and then boom they click this link and then you're vulnerable to a hack it's amazing <laughs> how many people were affected by that and we should be more vigilant and we have to be this day and age and we have to come to live with those we do live in a great age with instantaneous communication that can happen with someone in a different time zone as quick as you want right as long as they're online right and then uh, for for me and I know you feel this way as well Ted security is the utmost priority when it comes to clients um, and blockchain now is looking more and more welcoming to completing real estate and archiving documents. And this will make resale so much easier to keep track of documents and the history of a listing and the data necessary for a transaction. And yes, this is going to help the consumer because you're going to be avoiding some drip fees from lawyers or HOAs that can now be reduced and protect the consumer and keep more money in their pockets and provide that desirable quality of life that they're looking for. I mean, you, 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 you brought up another good point, and that is, um, you know, we, there, there are going to be um, parts of the real estate transaction that are going to be removed um that cost money because they take time and, and you know uh, oftentimes that means uh people and 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 parts of the transaction maybe additional fees that uh, uh won't need to be there in in the very near future and not to uh not to bag on uh title industry uh, too much at this point but you know that's going to change too as uh, properties become recorded on blockchain and the likelihood of there being any uh, claim against the title uh, beyond a certain point back is going to be zero. You know, so uh, title insurance won't be needed in in the way it is now, uh, especially for new construction properties where um, they start out from a plan and there there was no um, encumbrances or any other you know transactions attached to the title you know before it was built. Oh, totally agree. In fact, that's one very noticeable difference from North America and Mexico. It, culturally, uh, the Mexican people don't really put insurance on their properties so much. A lot of them do. A lot of them do. A lot of them do. But uh, when we're talking 
like uh, social economically, people have to choose between food and insurance. Usually the Mexican people will go with the food instead. So I have noticed a great um, number of my clients are always asking for insurance. And of course, they've got their own way to keep track of their documents. But I think that what you're saying, I totally agree with. There's going to be an easier way to keep track of all of these things uh, in like a, a blockchain timeline of the transaction. It'll be 100% referable, uh, like easily to refer back to because um, it, it'll be like an archive that you can just follow the trail, right? What was what was that um, in the accountant? Uh, oh, no, the, the big short. Follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah, and, you know, we'll... we'll uh... Uh, we'll talk about this on another show moving forward, but, uh, you know, be, w once a property is recorded on blockchain, um, it can be fractionalized. And what that means is um, the, the ownership can be divided into, uh, into different parts. Now, everybody knows what a timeshare is, but this is not that. This is uh, a different way to pr own property fractionally or, or depending upon what kind of software might be on the platform that it's it's located uh an nft can be generated and time can be sold uh, or another way to say it is a, a rental can be created uh, via nft so uh, but that's a whole nother show that we'll have and that's a very interesting conversation and and extra benefit of this blockchain technology that we're Oh, you got me excited. Well, I guess I'm going to have to wait to talk on that show because I got so much to comment on there. <laughs> great, great. Well, um, I, I do want to say, too, that um, uh, as we start uh, delving into more complex and interesting topics, um, it's important for me to throw this disclaimer out there that uh, neither Jesse nor I uh, will ever contact anybody directly from the show about any type of crypto investment scheme or request uh, asking for money of any kind you know as, as we uh pioneer and put ourselves out there to to get the word across we also attract the kind of attention that we want and people want to try and uh get to us or get to our circles and so um the information on this show is for informational purposes and uh uh, we will not talk about investing in crypto or trading in crypto, uh, but we will talk about how it's relevant to real estate transactions and how to use it in a real estate transaction. So I just wanted to put this disclaimer out there uh, in, in the event that uh, something like that happens where we can't be held responsible for some of these things that these platforms that we keep talking about should be able to control the AI that they have, but refuse to because it leads to more uh, division and therefore interaction between people and revenue for them. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off on that diatribe, but um, that's a whole, a whole nother rant for another show. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll comment on uh, Ted and I. Ted, you're, we're, we have a lot in common, but one thing that I appreciate about us having in common is that we're both, we're both perpetual students. Who love to learn and share and I know many clients appreciate that kind of help to avoid the pitfalls that are causing disruption in people's social media lives so we're gonna keep talking and if you find this interesting feel free to what what's the word like and subscribe right like share follow and uh, you know we, we're, we're also going to be putting out some 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 value-added stuff for you to take with you like uh, we do have a uh, an ebook on uh, on how to uh, safely behave online and what to look out for. Uh, we'll put that link in the bio as well. Uh, also, uh, we've got one on how to create an avatar if you want to join us here in the metaverse, tetaverse space um, and, and explore other spaces, um, uh, although I don't know why you'd want to. Uh, and, and we're also going to, uh, our next show is going to be a field trip on um, on the, the actual Tediverse space uh, to, to show people where uh, real estate in Web3 is going and, and how, how we'll be communicating moving forward. I, I had actually wanted to take a quick field trip over there with you, Jesse, to show people 
where they can find you and what you're on. Um, but uh, we'll do that next time too. Uh, all right, I know you got to get going, so uh, we'll wrap things up. Thanks very much for for, for uh, participating again, and uh, um, I'll let you take it out. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you again on the next show. Looking forward to seeing you all again. Don't forget, we got NF Ted and Jesse Canuck, a Canadian kid from Brick Luxury and Living in Cancun, Mexico. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Be safe.